Hey, what's up guys? Uh, Paul here from Metal Maker Shop. Uh, I haven't posted a video in a while, uh, mainly because I've been keeping this machine here behind me running, uh, which is a good thing. So as much as I like making the videos, unfortunately they don't pay the bills, but this machine does. So when I was starting out, I really kind of struggled with this. And if you're starting out, you know, you might be too. So hopefully uh, this might shed a little light on things. Uh, but how do you price your CNC work? Or pretty much any work for that matter. But today we'll focus on CNC work. Um, really... Hardest part about this is you don't want to undercut yourself or you're afraid you're going to charge too much or wherever. And honestly, you could probably jump on YouTube and there's hundreds of videos that, uh, you know, tell you how to do the systems that work for other people. I mean, you got you can charge by linear inch, by hour, by square inch. There's way, there's other systems, so on and forth. Um, and they make work better for you. But this system for me works. I figure, you know, show you. Hopefully it'll help you out and we'll go from there. So um, I generally use a two type system. First, I like to figure out the weight of what the material is so I don't have been charged and I figure out my price there and I eventually figure out a square inch price. Um, and the reason I do that square inch price is because it's a fast way to quote. I don't have to figure out anything. I don't have to add up weights of material, whatever it is. I know real fast what I can figure out uh, if someone just, you know, hey, I've got this piece, it's this dimensions, this thickness of material, you know, what's it going to cost me? I can figure it up with square inch price real fast. So, um, all right, so let's take a scenario here. Uh, you got a walk-in customer. Uh, he needs a five by five by quarter inch piece of material. Um, you're going to cut it on the CNC. You're going to clean it real quick and you're going to hand it off to him. There's no extra prep. There's no paint. There's no powder coat. There's no bend or weld process or anything like that. It's just a very quick thing down and dirty job. So, all right, so let's figure it out. Okay. So let's take our scenario. We've got a five by five by quarter inch piece of material. That's what we're cutting out. Now, I don't know what we need to do, and everybody should know this formula is a formula to figure out the weight, so that way uh, you know what you're being charged when you're buying steel from the steel company. So the way we do that is we take the length times the width multiplied by the thickness of the material, we'll do TH, multiplied by 0.284. So if we plug those numbers in, so we're handed in a calculator using this right here, we're going to do 5 times 5 times 0.25, quarter inch, times 0.284. 284. And that gives us a total of 1.775 for the weight of our material. Let's just make it easy and we're going to say that piece of material weighs 1.7 pounds. Okay, now we got to know how much we're getting charged for the material. And being as a little guy are starting out, unfortunately, this is where you kind of get screwed. But it is what it is and hopefully you'll get busy enough that this won't matter anymore. But all the big guys, the guys that are moving a lot of material, they're buying a lot. So they're buying coils at a time or pallets at a time. There's a lot of weight there. And usually in the steel industry, the more weight you get, the cheaper the price is going to be. So let's say price for the big guys they're getting it is, I don't know, 60 cents a pound. But since you got to go buy it at kind of the local shop down the road, uh, you're getting charged quite a bit more. So let's say $1.30 a pound is what you're getting charged. So we're going to use $1.30 a pound as our price point. All right, so we take that 1.7 pounds. We multiply that by $1.30 a pound. And doing the math on that comes out to 1.7 times $1.30 equals $2.21 is what that material is going to cost. Now remember, that's just the material. We need to add in some other things. So let's say um, you got consumables into your cost. Um, I've done enough on my thing that I know that if I add another dollar on top of that, that's going to easily cover my consumer's cost. So we add a dollar to that um, for our consumables. Consumes, that's our material. And then also, uh, we got to pull the piece off. We got to clean it off, get it re prepped, ready to go. So it's a clean piece. So there's not a bunch of crap on it. Um, with this 5x5 five five piece, I analyzed the program. I know that from start to finish, it's going to take me probably about five minutes total to do one piece. And if I add another dollar on top of that to clean it, that's pretty reasonable. So if you do the math on that, so that's $4.21. Okay, so $4.21 is what we need to charge. Excuse me, $4.21 is what we're getting charged that's costing us to cut this material. Okay, so here's the hard part. Now we got to figure in our profit, um, so which is probably why you're watching this video. Um, 
you're going to have to figure out kind of in your area of what you can charge. Even if that's a matter of calling around a little bit, you know, just kind of doing some detective work to find out what other people are charging, or at least get an idea, maybe kind of gauge what you can charge within the area you live. Um, I know here in the Northeast, kind of Ohio area, uh, cost of living is very reasonable, uh, at least where we're at. So um, I don't have to charge a whole lot. So, and I still make a decent amount of money and make a good living on top of the profit. Uh, if you're living somewhere out west, maybe California or something, then you're probably going to have to charge quite a bit more. But uh, in my experience where I've had, I've known that if I take my material cost, multiply that by two and a half times, that gives me a pretty good baseline for my profit. So let's use that as our baseline. Okay, so here's that $4.21 that it's costing us. And we're going to multiply that by two and a half. So calculator says $4.21 multiplied by 2.5 comes out to $10.00. And 52 cents is what we should be charging our customer. Now, to make things e easier, I tend to like to just round up. So we're just going to round that up to $11. We need to charge $11 for that part. So there you go. You got to figure it out. You know what your material cost is. You're going to multiply it up for your profit. It's going to give it in. And we're going to give you a total. And then we're going to round it up a little bit just to make a little more uh, little icing on top of the cake there for you. Um, all right, so this was for weight-based. Kind of figure it out. We'll say weight. Hopefully I spelled that right. Weight. Okay, so now we want to figure out square inch price. Now remember, the reason I'm doing this is so that I can figure stuff up real fast. So we know that a 5 times 5 area, 5 times 5, for quarter inch material, keep in mind, oops, sorry, I really can't see that there. Keep in mind that... Uh, Quarter inch, this is your pricing for quarter inch material. Different things of material might change a little bit. So remember that. This is for quarter inch. All right, so back to this here. Five by five equals 25 square inches. And we know we need to charge $11 for this. So we take $11, we divide that by 25 square inches, comes out to 0.44. So we know we need to charge 0.44 cents a square inch when we're figuring out prices. All right, so there you go. That's pretty simple. You figured out the weight-based system of how you figure it out, and you also figured out the square inch price from your weight-based system. Um, Again, that square inch price is great that if you already know that you got to charge 44 cents a square inch for whatever the piece is, in our case, quarter inch mild steel material, that's what we're using. So if someone comes up and says, hey, I need a 10 by 10 and a quarter inch, you can figure that out. You take your 10 by 10, you multiply that by 0.44, comes out to 44, sorry, 10 by 10 would be 100 square inches, multiply that by 0.44 cents, so it comes out to 44 bucks. Trying to keep the math simple for you so you know what it is. All right, now something to consider. That 5x5 five by, five by quarter inch piece came out to, uh, what do we say, 11 bucks. Um, I know that uh, it's going to take me about five minutes. It's going to be a quick job. But honestly, I don't want to charge $11 for that job. Even though it's five minutes, it's quick. But if you figure up your profit and you take that $11, see what's it come out to? $11 minus 4.21 comes out to $6.79. That's how much profit you're making off that one piece. So, like, honestly, that's, I don't want to do a job for that little of amount. So every shop needs a shop minimum. So make sure you're figuring in some sort of shop minimum price. In this case, uh, generally at my shop, it's 25 bucks. So if someone walks in off the street Need something cut real quick. If it's not, if my cost of what it is when I figure it up isn't at least $25, you're getting charged $25. So that way it makes it worth my time to set the machine up, put it in, and go from there. So, all right, cool. You did the job, got the money, awesome, easy peasy job, out the door we went. So two weeks later, he comes back, says, hey, Paul, man, that piece worked great. I need 20 more of these. Like, okay, well, guess what? You already know how much to charge. You've already figured it out before. You already know your square inch price. You already got that done. So let's figure it up now. Okay, remember, you did that job before, and you knew that we had to charge this customer $11 per piece. Um, since he's not doing one, we're not going to charge him that minimum anymore. So now we're going to do however many needs. So we're going to take $11 times 20, 
And sorry guys, my math is horrible. Thank God for calculators. That comes out to $220. So we are gonna charge our customer $220 to do those 20 pieces of five by five by quarter inch cutouts or whatever for whatever he's using them for. So see how easy that was? We figured that out super fast. Okay, let's figure out let's figure it out an hour rate so we kind of got a better idea how much we're we're making here. So we know that we're charging two hundred and twenty twenty dollars. Uh, and what were we getting charged per piece? So four dollars and twenty one cents was our cost. All right, back to the other side. All right, so four dollars twenty one. Multiply that by twenty. Again, calculator again. Fourteen twenty one. You're probably way faster than me in your head, but hey. We'll get by. Okay, so we know our cost for our material for that job is going to be $84.20. We're charging 20, and we're going to subtract 220 minus $84.20. We're going to make $135.80 profit off that job. All right, that's not too bad. Now, the big question is now, how much is that in an hourly rate? So we know that. Uh, at least I kind of figured up that each one of those pieces is going to take me five minutes to cut. And we multiply that by 20, and that comes out to about 100 minutes. All right, so we do the math on that. That's 100 minutes uh, total. What it takes, if we take uh, $135.80, divide that by 100, that comes out to roughly $1.35 a minute of profit that I'm making on that job. And since there's 60 minutes in an hour, we're gonna multiply that by 60. And that comes out to $81 an hour profit is what you're making off that job. That's pretty good. All right, well, if you're in the Northeast like me for any blue collar job, if you're making 81 bucks an hour on a job, that's pretty darn good. So I would be pretty happy with that. Now, again, if you're living out West or somewhere else, it's a higher cost of living. And again, your, your, your numbers are going to be a little different. So you're going to have to charge, <clears throat> excuse me, you're going to have to charge a little more. So you, you might be more than $81 an hour. So, but still 81 bucks an hour for a job, the guy that walked in, that's pretty easy. And that was an easy way to figure it up. We figured up the weight. So we knew how much we were getting charged and we figured up a square inch price so we could quote the price real quick. All right, hopefully that helped you. But remember, uh, you know, your CNC plasma table, uh, yes, it's a money maker for poor job, for, excuse me, for jobs, uh, but it's also a tool for your shop. So hopefully if you're doing CNC plasma cutting too, you're also doing bending or maybe welding or drilling or another operation job. So while you're setting up this machine right now to do that five by five by quarter inch piece, uh, if you got the coordinates material, throw some up. You might have another job that needs bend or needs some welding on it. So while that guy that walked in off the street and needed the 20 pieces and making you 80 bucks an hour, you might have another weld job that's making you 50 bucks an hour. And in the meantime, that machine's cutting apart. So now you're making 80 bucks an hour off that machine. You're making 50 bucks an hour off the other thing. And that's what, $130 an hour that you're making in your shop. And it's a, dude, that's awesome. So um, now obviously it doesn't always work out that way. And those are pretty... Uh, I don't know, positive numbers or whatever the case may be, because you're going to have other expenses and so on and stuff inside that. But for the very least, that at least gets you started with the pricing, and then you can adjust that as you need to. Because don't forget, uh, pieces need powder coated or painted or whatever else another step needs to be added into. You know, make sure you add that into your cost of that material. Again, we were just figuring up weight. That was a quick, easy thing. We cut it on the table, we cleaned it, we handed it off to the customer, he paid up, he was happy, we were happy, and off it went. So. Um, cool guys. Well, hopefully that's it. Um, I hope that helped you. I mean, that's, like I said, that's kind of the system that worked for me. It might not be the best, or maybe it is the best. I don't know, but that's what's always worked for me in the past. And it's come my experience. Uh, so, um, you know, if you got a better idea or someone that's watching this, that, uh, the system works for you, you know, leave it down in the comments, you know, you, we're here to help everybody. So, um, at the end of the day, uh, you don't want the guy down the road for you to be your competitor. You want him to kind of be like another, uh, extension of your business. So what if your table goes down and he has a table and you need to use his table? Yeah, it's going to cost you some more money to get it cut, but you can keep the process going because maybe down the road you might have a press break that you can bend something that he can't bend and he's going to come back to you. So you don't want to burn any bridges. Um, so, uh, but yeah, so we're kind of here to help everybody out. So 
uh, cool guys. Well, usual like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. So uh, hopefully we'll catch you on the next video. So all right, thanks guys. Appreciate it.